Welcome to the Blessed Hope. Uh, this ministry is by our family. Every night we go through a particular part of the Bible as we study. We, as a family, are inviting you into our study. That the Bible says, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. I do these studies with my family so they can grow in the Lord, so they can know the Lord through the Word of God, by the Word of God, of the Word of God. It's the very importance. And we invite you to listen, to share, to learn with us too, the Word of God. We ask that you uh, share these, to give full liberty of sharing to your friends, to your family. We ask that you use these videos for the edification of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that you abuse not these videos. They are to work for the Lord Jesus Christ, for edification, for growth. We thank you. Welcome to the Biblical Truth of Our Hymns, as we take a study on what we're singing in the churches. And we break down what we're singing in our churches today. I found a Bible verse that goes with this study very interesting. That last week, if you remember when we did, we found a gospel track about the Ten Commandments. A man standing before the judge and finding guilt the way he was singing, breaking the Ten Commandments. And now I'd like to turn to Psalms 47, verse 7. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. Psalms 47, 7. So, again, not all these hymns that we're going to do are going to be bad. Don't think every one of them, you know, Stolly says picking on them and they're all out the window. There's going to be some excellent hymns. We got one today. But in a church congregation, we've got three people. We got people that are saved and love the Lord and trying to do right. We got people that are saved and don't care. They're saved, that's good enough. And then we got people in the church, they're not saved. And the Bible says that we will give an account. Of every idle word. So, if we got hymns that we got the saved but I don't care world, and we got the unsaved world, and we open up our hymn books and have them sing, the very verses that we have them sing may be lying. See, we've got lying, it, it, it's an everyday normal thing. When we call out sick and we're not sick, it's a lie. When we tell a story and it's not true, it's a lie. And we got to realize what the Bible says when it comes to singing. We must sing with understanding. We got to know what we're singing. And without knowing what we're singing, we stand in doubt and we stand what the Word of God says for us to do when we don't do it. So, we are really looking at a serious event here when we are singing in our congregations. Now, is it wrong to sing in church? No, it's not. God wants us to sing. God wants us to make melody in our heart. Hymns, that, that, that's we praising God. Psalms, that's a whole book of our Bible. But we can realize some of our hymns are not scriptural at all. Some of our hymns do not fit 
the whole world. They were not meant to be sung by the world. They were meant to be sung by Bible-believing Christians who've loved the Lord. But since the church is so so followed up, we allow anybody in. When we got on the signboards, all are welcome. Then we open up our hymn books and everyone sings. So today, oh worship the king. And oh worship the king, Psalms 104, verses 1 through 6. Blessed the Lord, O my soul, O Lord my God, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty, who covers thyself with light as with a garment, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds as his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind, who maketh his angels spirits, his ministers a flaming fire, who laid the foundation of the earth that it should not be removed forever. Thou covers it with the deep as with a garment, the waters stood above the mountains. Now Sir Robert Grant was a British lawyer and politician. He advocated for the removal of the disabilities of Jews. The Jewish disabilities were illegal restrictions and limits placed on Jews in the Middle Ages. So here we have someone who's trying to help Jews, God's people. I will bless them that bless you. In the meantime, he was strong supporter of the world missions and influential among evangelicals in the Church of England. And we look at, O worship the King, O glorious above, and grant fully sing, gracefully, gratefully sing, his wonderful love, our shield and defender, the ancient of days, pavilion in splendor and girded with praise. O tell of his might, O sing of his grace, who robe is the light, Whose canopy is faith. I'm not going to sing. It's fair, you guys. His chariot of wrath, the deep thunder clouds form. And dark is his pavilion. Now, excuse me, dark is his path on the wings of the storm. Thy bountiful care, what tongue can recite? It breathes in the air, it shines in the light. It streams from the hills, it descends to the plain, and sweetly distills in the dew and the rain. Frail children of dust, and feeble as frail. In thee do we trust, nor find thee to fail. Thy mercies how tender, how firm to the end. Our maker, defender, and redeemer, and friend. Well, that's, this is a great one. It gives the proper attitude towards God, not man. And even when he speaks and stands before, he puts man down. Who we are, we're, we're dust, we're dirt, we're frail without God. We're in hell without Jesus Christ. And to sing to God, to worship to God, this is good. Ancient days we saw already that's in the book of Daniel. And the first time, glorious, grateful, wonderful, splendor, and praise. Nothing, nothing of our words can ever describe who God is. The shield and defender found often spoken by King David. This man who, who helped and tried for Jews has written a hymn for the Jews. In the splendor of that King Jesus who will come. And take them out from the wilderness of a place prepared for God. And to bring them back into their land and to settle upon the throne of David. To rule and reign of a thousand years of no Satan. Of the curse being removed off the earth. See, this is the worship of the king, King Jesus. I've already seen in other hymns, not this one. But, you know, they speak of King Jesus for the church. He's not the king of the church. He's never king of the church. But here, he's King Jesus over Israel. And this hymn is a great hymn for Jewish people. I would advise you that if you have a, a Jewish synagogue or a group of people where, G, where Jews are going to be gathered together and you want to witness Christ, you want to witness God to them, I would break out in your hymn book, Oh, Worship the King, and this hymn can be sung to those unsaved Jews. 
It's a great testimony to Christ the King and the Old Testament, as we've seen with Daniel and King David. Tell and sing. That's New Testament orders. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. And this would be a great with the Bible as a witness. He calls his he calls his chariots a wrath and psalm clouds of his chariots. See, God is love, and he is, the Bible says. But he's also a God of anger with sin and sinners. John the Baptist says, if you don't have the Son, you shall see the wrath of God, John 3.36. Got to realize that holy, righteous God of love will throw sinners into hell, rejecting Jesus Christ. Habakkuk 3.8, was the Lord displeased with against the rivers was thy anger against the rivers was thy wrath against the sea thou dost this ride upon thy horses and thy chariots of salvation chariots are designed by for war in the bible and when you get people out there peace 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 there is no peace save the lord unto the wicked Amos 5, 18 and 20, Woe unto you to desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. As if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him, or went to a house and leaned, on, and leaned his hand on the wall, and a serpent bit him. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark, and no brightness in it? You gotta realize, there is no splendor, there is no color, there is no peace and love to wicked men. It brings the wrath and anger of God. And to his Jews, his people, the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, if they do not receive Christ the Messiah as their Savior, they too, those of the chosen seed of the Old Testament, will be cast off in the lake of fire. As God destroyed the temple with Babylon. As God destroyed the temple with Titus. As God will give them a period of time called Jacob's trouble. Bountiful care, what tongue can recite? Could we sit down and count every single blessing? No, we can't. Now I'm talking about from the day that you were saved. How about even before you were saved? How about all the times that Satan may have tried to destroy you? Satan might try to lead you away from God. Satan tried to get you away from Jesus Christ. Satan tried whatever he could to prevent you from being saved. And God stepped in. Now, I, I know that God has called me right now as far as street ministry, gospel tracts, and preaching. But I can look back in even infancy where my life, as an infant, there have been two or three times told to me that my life would have ended. Had not I been taken to a hospital care, had I been not brought to a particular facility, I may not have ever lived the night. I think and believe, and I can be wrong, but those things were God to spare me because God knew later on what I would do for him. And I remember there was a time that I was off swimming in a lake and almost drowned. And I'm not going to get into details because I'm not going to get into the ooky spooky kind of thing, but I know what God done for me. And it's times like that, yeah, okay, write that down in my book. And I do keep over here, I, I got my Bible, my Bible is dated. I got a book of, of things that happened month, date, and year. But what about the times I don't know about? What about the times I'm driving down the road and God has set a red light? God has set something to prevent an accident. Any parent knows with children that there is that one, that moment that somehow you are called to go in that room and that child is about to do something. That if not harm them, it would kill them. Again, I remember another time, one of the blizzards, where I should not have been heard 
and yet my mother heard me scream. Count every single blessing we can. It's a bountiful care. Bountiful is not even a word that describes but beautiful for this end. The bountiful care that God has preserved that nation of Israel from the time of calling Abraham. Genesis 12. Until 2017 that all the world has tried to wipe out that Jew. And yet there are still Israelites today. Most of the enemies of Israel, they've been wiped off. They are gone. They are forgotten. They are just scribbles on a rock or a clay pottery. And yet Israel still about. What bountiful care that the children as the stars, the children as the sand and the sea, that can speak of what God's blessing them through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There's a vast number, if not an unnumerable amount to account for. Bountiful care what words, and yet, it does not say enough that God, I'm 48 years old, I'm getting old, my body hurts, snap, crackle, and pop is my feeling, it's no longer my cereal, and I don't know how long I have, my, my feet, my body, sore, I don't know how long. And yet, the day that the rapture, or the day that I'm absent from this body and present with the Lord, I will go off into eternity where there will be no more time. No more seconds. No more hours. No more weeks. No more months. No more clocks. Forever to be in a brand new body that will never suffer and never have sin. Never tears. Never sorrow. For all eternity. That's promised to me. Boy, is that something that you can write down as a blessing. Sometimes we Christians take God for granted. Sometimes our prayers are, God, give me, give me, give me, and never, God, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, God says, pray unto me. You have need, ask. He says it. But Paul is thanking. Rejoice evermore. Look. Cannot speak of all the care it breathes. As if it were alive. Light that shineth forth. Streaming, flowing, pure and clean. Waters the hills. Runs into the plain. Sweeter, cleaner, refreshing. Of weather and morning air. It's all given by God. Do you realize that power that water has that man needs air, water, and food? And in that order, man would put food, 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 then water, and when it wouldn't be water, it'd be soda, beer, then, you know, then oxygen. I don't think about oxygen to, to do I go in the hospital and they put the holes on me. Even Esau himself, oh, God, give me that porridge. I'll sell my birthright because I am about to famish. Really? No, you're not. But the purest things that we see of man in a cursed world is that of rain and look at the snow. And yet the water, we may not be able to get enough. Florida, it, it, we've, we've had rainstorms, but it's not doing what we need for water. Or we can have a water that is satisfying. It's enough. Or we can have water that's overabundant. We may not have enough, may have too much. We may have in the middle. But God provides. The weatherman does not give us the rain and the clouds. He only tells us he thinks by the patterns it's coming. And we look to the weatherman. What's the weather going to be for our picnic Saturday? No, let's look to God for the weather to be on Saturday. God gives us the weather. Dust is frail. Our frame is fragile. Frail and frail. Webster's 1828 Dictionary, weak, 
infirm, liable to fall and decay, subject to casualty, easy destroyed, perishable, not firm or durable. That's a great definition. Because that's exactly what we are. We're weak. One little cell in our body that gets messed up can cause a cancer, can cause a flu, can cause a breakdown. And we're all liable to, to, to fail. We will decay if the Lord tarries upon death. We lose our, our skin flakes. When you dust in a house, some of that dust is you. Your skin, your hair. Subject to casualties. The, the, the events that could happen, boom, just like that. And your whole life will be changed. An accident. Not on purpose. Man, it can change your whole future. Easily destroyed. Look at all the ways that man has come up to destroy man. From Cain killing his brother Abel. We've got in the military now that we don't even need to send troops to the enemy field. We've got missiles. We've got devices. We've got drones that, that mechanical can go over there and kill people. Perishable. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. And yet Christ came to die for our sins to remove our perishableness. He came to take that perishableness that I have and to give it eternal life as a gift of God. And we're not durable. And even when God says no to our prayers, he never fails. His no is our good. And that's why we trust in him. Tender and firm. Ever hear somebody describe somebody as being firm? God is. He's a holy God. He can't allow unrighteousness. He can't allow sin. That's for our benefit. And Jesus Christ is for our better benefit. Though we can't, through Christ we can. He's our maker. I didn't come from nothing. And I don't even understand what the Big Bang is. They have a problem. Where did God come from? I got a problem. Where did the Big Bang come from? My thing of creation and the creator God is more logic than your Big Bang. Because God is a supreme almighty God. He's always been. But that explosion that you say, a explosion can't come from nothing. And it's not evolution because evolution taught everything gets better and better and better. Bring an elderly person who's bowed over because their bones are tired and weak and needs a cane. And has to have glasses. And it's got false teeth. And a hip replacement. Bring them into the science room that's teaching evolution. And say, here is your evolution of getting better and better. But that would prove science wrong. And believe it or not, evolution is starting to die. Because they can't prove it. Defender. He's protection. He protects us. He has protected Israel. They are not exterminated. Yet the Nazis are. Babylonians are gone. 
But the children of Israel worship the king. Israel, God has protected you. God has defended you. And God has given you the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Believe on him. Not only did God make you as a fetus to be grown inside your mother to be life, but he made you a nation by Abraham, by Isaac, and by Jacob. Redeemer. God redeemed you through Moses of that Passover lamb. The night you left Egypt. God is looking to redeem you by Jesus Christ out of the world in sin. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, purchased the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Purchased your soul to wash away your sins. Through the finished work of Calvary by Scripture, by being buried, and by raising up the third day according to the Scripture. Of the nation of Israel, he made them. Of the nation of Israel, he defends them. And as a nation of Israel, he wants to buy you back from Satan. He loves you. As a friend. Peter, James, John, Andrew. They were Jewish. He was a friend to the Jewish people. Mary, Martha, Lazarus, friend. He can be a friend not to a nation today, but he can be a friend to an individual Jew by believing on Jesus Christ. Oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. This hymn, O oh Worship the King, gives all glory to God by Israel. And it's sad to say that many Jews are not going to partake. I'm happy to say that I have I have a few Jews that are friends with me that are saved. And we can break for a minute on the other side of the scale, Satan. Satan offers no creation. Satan can't create anything. He's science and instruments. And I'm trying to think of a word. Uh, discoveries, but that's not. Scientifically, Satan brings through experiments. What protection does Satan give? None. Even his own people he seeks to destroy. He will not speak to his own people about the plague, the harshness. And the reality of hell burning. Has Satan ever purchased? Purchased nothing. They come to him by birth through Adam. What friendship does Satan offer? He may offer a friendship. He may be, befriend you. He may give you fame. He may give you money. He may give you record albums. He may give you scripts for movies. But John 8, 44 says he's a liar. Satan teaches science. He battles against us. He is our enemy. Israel, Satan's against you, Revelation 12. He wants to devour you. He has attacked the women of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to prevent that seed of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. He has made those women barren where God had to step in. He had tried to ruin that seed with Hagar. He tried to ruin that seed with a, with a pile of beans for a dinner. He tried to ruin that seed with the wrong wife. He tried to ruin that seed with, you know, a, a woman that was entitled to the next child. But the father-in-law going in unto her. Satan tried to tr destroy Israel by a Pharaoh that knew them not. And they got victory. 
Israel. Oh, worship the king, and that's Jesus Christ. All oh, glorious above. The stars, the moon, the satellites, those pictures that Hubble's taken cannot compare to God in his glorious, in his holiness. And in his holiness, he has pronounced you children, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, sinners found guilty, except under the blood of the Lamb of Jesus Christ. And gratefully sing his wonderful love, as David done. The Bible says David made instruments to praise God. This can be a church song, but it's not really a church song. It's a Jewish song about the Messiah. Because again, king is not the church. It can be a song written to unsaved people. Oh, worship the town. Oh, worship the king. But then you're giving them a, a false meaning to unsaved because he's not going to be their king. He's savior, husband, and gratefully sing his wonderful love, love of God. Our shield and defender. The Ancient of Days. Israel would recognize that if they studied their Old Testament. Pavilion in Splendor. Oh, the majesty that God's in. The four and twenty-four elders. We don't even know. The four beasts. All the angels. All the splendor. The New Jerusalem. And girded with praise. They're singing right now before God in the throne. Those who have gone to be absent from the body and present with the Lord are singing to God and Jesus Christ. Oh, tell of his might, go in all the world and preach the gospel. The fathers were told in the law, tell your children, their children to tell their children, and their children to tell their children's children. Let not the Passover be forgotten. Let not the days of Purim be forgotten with Esther. O oh, sing of his grace, whose robe is the light. You remember someone like that? Standing before Moses and Elijah with Peter, James, and John? Now, I'm gonna say, like I said, there's other hymns that there's no Jesus. No name Jesus. And when you're dealing with Jews, you can't go up to a Jew and say, Jesus, you've already turned them off. You got to start with the Old Testament and work your way to Jesus for them. This song is not going to turn a Jew off because you mentioned Jesus. But there he is, robed with light. And witnessing to him through this hymn, you can bring him up to Moses and Elijah on the Mount Transfiguration. Eventually. It's going to take time with a Jew. But look at that. There's Jesus. Whose canopy face. His chariots are wrath, the deep thunder clouds are formed. So what does God, when it comes to man, is it God hates the sin and loves the sinner? No, it's described as a violent, wicked, dark storm in this hymn. Sometimes that lightning strikes and kills. Sometimes that lightning strikes and starts big fires. Sometimes that lightning and rain comes and it floods. It destroys, mudslides. Fierce storms and anger. But God is love. It's also a God of wrath. And dark is his path on the wings of the storm. The universe is dark. When Jesus Christ comes back, it's dark. The earth is in darkness as he comes shining forth in light. See, there's Jesus again. Their hope, their redeemer coming. This hymn will bring a Jew to Jesus with prayer. Thy bountiful care, what tongue can recite? Only by the pages of the Old Testament for the Jews. And even 
despising Jesus and rejecting Jesus. Look what all the things he's done for the Jewish people. He dealt with the Jewish people as God deals with sinners. Long-suffering and patience. God has been long-suffering and he's been patient with the Jews. When it comes to Jacob's trouble, he's going to pull their pants down. And he's going to smack them on the rear end. He's going to chastise them. But he loves them, Hebrew says. It breathes in the air. It shines in the light. It streams with the hills. It descends to the plain. It sweetly distills in the dew of the rain. God providing the water for those Jews in the wilderness. For those Jews that will be in the wilderness in Revelation 12. Frail children. Oh, we're, not, it's already said, we're, we're, we're dust. Frail children of dust and feeble as frail. In thee do we trust. You can't say that for the children of Israel today. You can't even say that with the church today. But all oh, those Jews. In Revelation 11 and Revelation 12, the Redmen, nor find thee to fail. There were, there were kings in the Jews that did love the Lord and did do right. Thy mercies, how tender. Oh. There were times that Moses stepped in, there were times God stepped in. Aaron making that golden calf should have been dead, but he didn't. Adam and Eve, when they failed the word of God, should have been dead, but they didn't. The first moment I rejected Jesus Christ, I could have been and should have been put into hell, but I wasn't. Thy mercies, how tender, how firm to the end, our maker, defender. Redeemer and friend. What a wonderful hymn. What a great hymn. I, I would say it would be a beautiful testimony to a Jewish man. If I knew that there was an unsaved Jew that visited the church, I'd break this hymn out. He might understand, or he may not, depending on what his teaching was. Count this one excellent. I was just looking at the name. So this one, right on.